G'day and welcome back to another brilliant edition of Wind Against Tide. So a couple of weeks ago, Joseph and I delved into the world of snapper fishing in Western Port, Victoria. It was greatly received, Joey. We had some uh, some great comments from people who watched it and really enjoyed it. But one thing that people thought may have been missing out on a little bit was the land-based portion of snapper fishing in Victoria. And I thought to myself, Joey, who's the king of land-based snapper in Victoria? Well, we've got him in the studio. Um, it was just too good of an opportunity to, to not have him live in person. The original King Kong, Donkey Kong man himself, uh, who also specialises in Big Daddy Snapper, <laughs> as he tells us. we got Big Daddy himself, Suraj, is in the house. Suraj, thanks for coming. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Dave, for inviting me. It's an honour to share my knowledge and experiences with uh, your viewers, and I hope uh, I can make some changes and uh, and, and help uh, people who are aspiring to catch uh, land-based snapper. Uh, they have more success. How, how long have you been doing a land-based snapper for, uh, Suraj? Uh, I, I I believe we have been doing for more than 15 years now and that was the only species that I would normally target. Uh, and that One of the reasons why is my family only eats snapper. So, you know, I never went for whiting or uh, squid. Or squid, yes, for bait and uh, other species. So uh, I started uh, uh, engaging myself more and more into... Uh, catching uh, what you call that uh, big daddy snapper from <laughs> Port Phillip Bay land base. Now, colloquially, snapper are known as for many diff- with many different names in various regions of Australia. But in Victoria, it's generally, Joey, you'd agree here, big red snapper for the, for the big ones or... Uh, uh, or, or for the male ones, a big, big no, knobber, knobber red, I would say. Knobber. There's, uh, there's pinkies. There's knobbers. There's, what else? Suraj brings red. his own one to the table. Uh, he calls them a daddy snapper. Is, is that what you're, you're going with, Suraj? Uh, daddy big, snapper for the big one. Uh, if you catch something above eighty-five centimeter, then we say big daddy. <laughs> big daddy. <laughs> Big daddy snapper now, yeah, and, and you said your uh, lovely wife. Uh, she 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 doesn't want you to catch the babies. She's only interested in big daddy. That, that's true. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, when you when you when you uh, cook uh, with something over four or five kilos, then you can make nice curry with it. Ah, <laughs> hey, we're, we're, we'll talk about that a little bit down the track when we get to the when we get to the eating part of <laughs> the podcast, Suraj. Yeah, but uh, so for anyone who's aspiring to catch snapper in Melbourne or in Victoria, let's say, what's some points for them to what What are they looking for before they go and wet a line, and what would some good starting locations be? Let's let's say this time of year, Suraj. If you get, you've got the opportunity to go snapper fishing right now. Where are you going, is, is and what? Is it good right now to go for snapper off the land? We should point out we're recording on the fourteenth of September, twenty twenty three, right now. So, yep. yeah, I reckon uh, it, uh, this would be the time to start uh, chasing them. Uh, it's the right time to move around, and I believe a uh, first. Uh, uh, when the water temperature is sort of nearing around 13 degrees, that's where you're likely to catch those big ones. And uh, usually uh, uh, in Port Phillip Bay, it would be in the northern arm where the water is a bit warmer. Uh, so you, uh, whenever there's uh, you know reports of uh, uh, snapper firing, you'll st- it normally starts from Port Melbourne, Williamstown, then it pro- goes to kind of Brighton, Altona, and then, uh, you know, then so probably Mordial later on. If I get a map up here, we can sort of reference that a little bit. So you're, you're saying Joey? that it's the, the northern part of Port Phillip is it would be a good place to start at the minute for land-based snapper? Absolutely, uh, and that's where sort of you, you're likely to catch the big ones at the moment. So a little bit like Western Port, we're saying start of the season in the cooler months, they're coming through... Port Phillip 
and they're beelining to the northern reaches. So up basically where the Yarra and, and the city is. Yeah. And then they sort of disperse as the water heats up. Yeah, and, and you can see later on that, you know, uh, 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 mid-November, uh, early November, you, you start them in, you'll find them in Karam and then Mount Martha, uh, those, those regions later during the season. Yep, okay. So, so right now you're starting up this northern part of Port Phillip. Yeah. And what conditions weather-wise are you looking for before you head out and wet along? Well, uh, see, the, the, the thing about location is every location has its plus and minuses, uh, but you need to understand the ground and what 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 uh, you and you fish there many times. You'll see some kind of a pattern in uh, in every location. So, example, if you if you are going to be targeting big snapper uh, in Altona area, you are looking at a wind that's got a little bit of east out there. But if you are in the in in the southeast region, uh, uh, then you will want southwest wind or northwest or something mix of uh, south and west. And, and why is that? Why is that, Suraj, that you're looking for that certain I, wind I, for those locations? I believe uh, it's got a lot to do with the, how the you know uh, bait fish are moving, where the foods are fl- uh, going. So, uh, we, we in, if you are in Altona and, and uh, if its wind is east, you're opposite. You know the, uh, the, the winds blowing towards you. So okay. you, you ideally want the uh, food sort of being sort of you know the stirred up, stirred up. Mm. Uh, and and that that goes true for like if you're a trout fisherman or something you you want where the wind's blowing and where the food's be yep. there the insects are going to be there that, well, i think I, I definitely remember over the years um like off mornington pier and mount martha rocks um when it's blowing a you know like more than 20 30 40 knots um southwest um that's when we seem to see most of the the snapper land-based reports come in from from that side uh, of the bay and um yeah it, it can be because uh, a lot of the the food and all that great stuff's getting uh, washed towards but also in a southwesterly big southwesterly um generally we've got a, a rising barometer as well which i think is another fantastic thing to consider for snapper fishing do you do you look at barometer or uh the moon phase at all when you're considering land-based snapper fishing suraj uh, what I've noticed is uh, when I've got those big ones I've bagged out with uh, you know my snapper it's most of the time being from uh, pressures being from uh, 1015 to 20 and that seems to be the range where it's sort of they feed a lot you can catch in 1010 and 1025 but 15 to 20 that seems to be an ideal and you want uh, ideally it's rising rising okay yeah. so we see images quite often of land-based snapper fishing this time of year and people are out in hurricanes with water splashing all over their faces yeah dressed up as big human condoms basically wearing <laughs> wearing all the wet weather gear yeah. Yeah. in the world. Yeah. Do you subscribe to that theory the rougher the better when you're out land based fishing? Or do you think that they can they can be caught in the dead dead calm? Uh, yes, uh, a lot of people say you, you should uh, you know you want to fish snapper, you want a, a rough uh, uh, wind or uh, southwest wind blowing hard uh, you can catch during uh, those conditions, but uh, you are likely to just catch one and that's it. But when, uh, uh, for me, I've seen success, uh, more success, or where I've been, I've backed out is uh, when actually the wind's been very calm. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah, so usually uh, with the high, uh, with the rough wind, uh, you might just catch one. But uh, I doubt anyone's sort of uh, bagged out in those conditions. Okay. Can I ask as well? Is it the is it the time of the day also? Do you, do you find uh, night time or daytime is better for land based snap, snapper fishing, Suraj? In your experience, because uh, from land base, uh, if you're fill- uh, if you're fishing from you know Port Phillip Bay, you're not uh, maximum. Uh, Water depth probably you are hitting is uh, five meters and not even that. Uh, maybe in Mount Martha, some region or some places you might get seven meters of water. 
So I found 95% it's been at night time, the big one, and it's when it's quiet. Sort of very, I know, four o'clock in the morning or two o'clock oh, wow. in the morning or five a.m. in the morning. So when when it's quiet, the things have settled. There's no boat movement around much. No jet sort skis. Of, uh, yeah, no jet skis around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and usually those uh, so-called big daddies are, uh, I think, more likely to be hunting around that time or coming close to the shores. So it's dead quiet at night. They're sneaking in shallow to feed, and yeah. you're there in in dead silence. Just yeah. you and your bottle of red wine. I was going to say maybe hot thermos of coffee, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I used to carry a bottle, of, uh, you know, some drinks uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> coffee, and then uh, nice little just, cabinet uh, and then uh, fish through the night. Yeah. So it's interesting. Like you're primarily chasing Big Daddy twenty pounder. Yeah. So you find. When you're chasing Big Daddy, 20 pounder, we're, we're refer- referencing them as Big Daddy for the entirety of this podcast, by the way. It's not usually when the bulk of the biomass of snapper are feeding hard. Because I know you've mentioned this to me before. A lot of people will come out land based with you and they catch, you know, five or six 40 centimeter pinkies on sunset, which is a traditional bite time for snapper. And then they're happy and they head home and you generally like to start fishing about then and you find early morning will produce that one lone big fish. Is yeah. that how you see it? They're, they're, they're getting away from the, the main biomass of small competitive fish? Yeah, sometimes you do get a school of uh, 70s or even, you know, early 80s that uh, you feel lucky and they... You, uh, but most of the time, yes, so I think the bigger ones are sort of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, moving around solely uh, in isolation, I suppose uh, they are on their own and they're feeding, and uh, they just need a bit of a quiet time and, uh, <laughs> and nothing more quiet than early uh, morning. Yep, in the shallows. Yeah, yeah, it's um, that's so interesting. You know, we we talk about some of the fishing that we've done in Western Port and even. When we're looking for Big Daddy in Western Port, it usually is by the cover of night in the shallow, calm waters as well. So it's very interesting how um, that can very much relate to the land. It does translate, for sure. Now, your fishing tackle, Suraj, it has to be quite specific for your style of fishing. So do you want to run us through that? Let's start with a, a, a rod and a reel. What rod and reel are you selecting to go out and chase these fish with? What style are you using? Well, the style will probably depend on uh, individual casting need, but uh, something like 11 feet rod, uh, 6 to 12 kilo would be ideal. Uh, b- uh, braid or mono? Uh, definitely braid, and you, you tie uh, 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 mono on, on the leader, and your, your, your rig is something like, a, we, I don't know what it's called, it's probably, we call it suicide rig, but where both the but the length of the bait and the length of the uh, sinker is more or less the same size or same, uh, same height or length. And so it's like a pattern oster basically, but you've got both yeah, droppers no. the same length. Yeah, but it's like a pattern oster, but what it helps is when you're casting sort of, you know, your, 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 your sinker and your bait are sort of together and you get that little bit more uh, air, air like, uh, okay, less so friction and you get a bit of more casting distance. So a bit like the distance casters, they use like an, an, I think it's called an imp clip or something like that where they clip the hook to the sinker to create one yes. object that's get flung out to sea. You're, so you're yeah. doing like a bit of a cheats version of that. Yes. So yeah, exactly. it, rather than like two things helicoptering through the sky making drag, you just make it very compact <laughs> and yeah. it all goes out as one and yeah. it's, it can cast further, right? So, yeah. And, uh, and plus, uh, yeah. <laughs> and plus, when 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 the when the sinker uh, your 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 rig hits the water, uh, a little bit of a length will give a uh, better movement. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. In in, uh, in, in the current. Be, yeah. In or, a better or uh, any wave movement. Yeah. yeah uh, bait presentation. Okay. So, your rods. How long is your rod, and what line weight are you using? I think the main 20, uh, 20 pound line uh, braid, uh, 30 pound, uh, I would say if you go less uh, in your leader, 
you got you got more chance of catching fish you might lose some fish uh, because the early snapper do have sharp teeth and uh, uh, this but you'll, you you'll probably hook more what sort uh, of pound leader are you thinking I, 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 I when I when I use 20 pound I used to catch heaps then I sort of went to 30 and 40 and it was a bit less I caught I, that was okay. my experience so and, and I've caught heaps uh, big fish with 20 pound line as long as you sort of uh, you know have a good headlight know where they are uh, running and you know the area well whether they are going to the reef or rocks or what so you do need to know your ground where and you need to have a good headlight to see where, where which direction the fish is uh, uh, you know uh, running so how long is the the rod itself because that's obviously helps you steer the fish away from any obstacles yeah 12 foot longer uh, what rod yeah length uh, yeah yeah 12 foot or 11 foot to yep yeah, nine to eleven, perfect. You can go up to thirteen, but uh, okay. Uh, it just depends on what suits you. Some okay. some some people use nine feet, some eleven. So yeah. How far are you actually aiming to cast in general? Is it or is that location specific? I think it's not a sort of a casting competi- competition when you're fishing land based on most of the. Uh, what we see is they go to the end of the pier and they want to go to most deep water and that seems to be what most of the people do in the, when they go land-based fishing. Yeah, people but, always fight for that last spot at yeah. the end of the pier, whether it be Moody Alec, Mornington, uh, yeah. you know, St Kilda. Yeah. Is it, yeah. yeah. And and usually, sometimes they are right, but most of the time it may not be the case sometimes in the shallow you throw you know, that, that will produce because there's a reef or some kind of a current running there. Yep. So, yeah. so they're casting away from the structure a lot of the times. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, they're casting it far, but it's nothing there out there. You know? yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so you, you prefer to map out the area that you're fishing and then you work out where yeah. you want your bait to be Absolutely, and what sitting. distance you need to cast and sort of, you know, like if you... If you know the uh, there's a there's a kind of reef sixty meters you want to just not go more than sixty meters you just want to be there you know cast forty meters yep yeah and you just work that out through do you use technology like Google Earth to map out where you're fishing or is it just uh, pure experience for you just experience just uh, when when you feel when you find a spot or location first thing you want to do is just fish daytime and cast all direction fish in all conditions and then sort of you will you'll you'll get a good uh, knowledge about where the fish are holding and usually you know that's that's true and that's uh, yeah it, it takes a bit of time uh, but you you'll start getting the reward you have to understand uh, you have to know the ground where you're fishing and if you are fishing at night then you should have fished in uh, in at daytime and it's not only you go and fish, you also have to take into consideration that uh, at night time, how are you going to, if you, if you hook that big fish, how are you going to land it? You, you have to be mentally prepared. If you're not prepared, then chances are most likely you lose that fish. It's most of the time, it's just right before you, you can land it, you lose that fish. Before we went on air tonight, Suraj, you yeah. quickly touched on being mentally focused um, for land-based snapper fishing. Talk us a little bit about through you know, being uh, mentally prepared to if, if this is something that you're really serious about doing. I, I suppose uh, uh, you know there are a lot of land-based uh, keen fishermen out there and uh, if... Uh, some of them or most of them sort of they get stuck in that uh, pinky kind of a level and sort of uh, lies uh, but if uh, if you want to sort of uh, uh, start catching bigger one than big daddy have, big daddy then you have first thing you need is a you know a sort of a kind of a mental change and think big and think big. Uh, think big, definitely in think big. Don't uh, I've seen they want to catch big snapper. I want to catch big snapper. They have one o- hook, and they cut the pilchard into three pieces and ra- tie it around with bait mate and hoping to get a twenty pounder. So it's um, either people may catch, but ninety uh, percent I think you lose uh, most likely. So what I'm saying is, uh, 
you have to think big and not get distracted with other small pinky or other some salmon uh, running around there. So what you want is... Oh, they run around. Uh, the around yeah. They right, run around right. those rocks. Uh, I mean, often. you've got to be focused. And then uh, uh, it, it does help if you have a good partner who's equally keen on sort of, you know, achieving and catching that snapper. And then it's a bit of a journey. And first to find the location, understanding the ground, and then... And uh, shouldn't you should uh, don't be afraid of be, uh, uh, putting big hooks. Uh, I, I normally when I'm doing land based fishing, I use six o hook. I, even the boat people they use five o. I use six o. So that's just my mental level. You know what, what I'm targeting. I'm not interested in the forty centimeter. So that can, and also the uh, that, I think that that uh, that shift and that uh, desire to sort of explore further that 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 has to be there otherwise it uh, a successful land based uh, fisherman will regularly every season catch a good you know uh, big uh, snapper every season because they have understood the ground they have that you know mental uh, uh, attitude and they have got some minds who are equal, equally keen and and this that uh, that just uh, equates to success so you're, you just touched on there. Mm. Um, so one thing I would extract from that is basically you've got a hit or a miss mentality. You don't mind missing repeatedly in the hopes of getting that one big fish. But one thing you did touch on there was that you're using a 6 hook, which is a, like a, a reasonably large hook in the snapper world, uh, purposely to avoid hooking the small pinkies. Absolutely, that's correct. Yeah. So, because you don't want to be dealing with small fish. No, I don't want to hook them. You, to take it that way, I'm not interested in 40, 50 centimeter hooking. So, if they are around, I'm most likely not uh, hooking them. So, this seems like an appropriate time to play this little video you've actually <laughs> sent us. So, this is a 90 centimeter snapper. I don't have a uh, weighing scale. But this fish, if you put it, it's almost like 90 centimeter. 90, like maybe 88, 90 centimeter fish. So, uh, I don't know. So you can hear the excitement in your voice in that video. So. That, what time of morning was that and what area did you uh, catch that one in? Uh, 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 it's, Dave, it's a good thing that you played that video. Uh, I actually went on that season. Uh, I probably went 12 to 14 nights wow. without any single fish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, what made and you keep going? Again, you know, that, 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 uh, that uh, motivation to land that uh, big one. Because, uh, but did you have belief that this yes. area was going to produce yes. one? Yes, because I knew the ground. Uh, I was just waiting for right condition. Uh, you know, sometimes there are a lot of small fish around, and the bigger fish don't get to eat because the, the small ones are faster and they have plenty. So uh, I had to eliminate all those. And uh, yeah, it, it, I think more than ten trips, I, I didn't catch a single fish. And that uh, after twelve or ten trips. I landed that one. So a momentous occasion. <laughs> so that was like what, 3 a.m. or something you caught that one, wasn't it? Sorry? Uh, Th 3 a.m. in the morning, very uh, early morning. It, it, yep. was, it was at 4 a.m. in the 4 morning. 4 a.m. in the morning, yeah. So everyone else had long given up and, and packed up, which is just another aspect of that wanting it more than everyone else, basically. Oh, absolutely. There's no... Uh, there's no substitute for putting the time. If you're not going to be putting the time, then you know, the chances are less. Yes, there are some people, uh, some friends who are very technical. They just fish two hours prime time. Uh, that's okay with uh, that. Uh, if you're uh, targeting uh, special fish, then uh, you do need to put that time. Yep. Yeah, so is that your was that your PB by the way off the rocks? Yes, so far that's been my PB, but uh, there's a uh, I like to uh, hopefully from this year or any time like to go ninety plus for sure. Uh, by when I say ninety plus, quite 
high in the 90s. Yep. So, <laughs> so it does, you know, I don't have to uh, sort of uh, guess whether it's uh, above 90 or not. I was just one like, yeah, so that's, that's the next goal. Okay, so <laughs> one thing we probably haven't touched on is bait. What's your preferred bait when you're fishing land base? Because for us in a boat, we can run a whole spread of baits and try and, you know, mix it up and see what's working. But when you're land base, you've got to be pretty confident with what you've got out there in the water, what's your go-to, Suraj? Uh, I've caught fish in pilchard. I've caught fish in uh, Saudi, and uh, but the most success I've had is when I've caught my own uh, uh, squid or uh, bait, and I've used that squid, and I've uh, uh, seems the sweet squid seems to be my preferred uh, bait. Uh, one of the reason is uh, I think the snapper love it. And the second thing is sometimes there are those small pinkies around. Uh, you know, they, they just nibble it and I know so my, my bait is still there. So yeah, okay. So even in Port Phillip, squid's your preferred? Yes. Because a lot of people consider Port Phillip to be more of a, a oily bait fish. Uh, absolutely, fish those mackerel, everything will work. I'm not saying it won't work. But what happens is uh, if you... Uh, if you've got a, you know, if you if you cast a pilcher and you get a small pinky by, uh, bites it, and then your pilchards are actually all gone and, and disintegrated, so yeah, there's okay. nothing left out there. So uh, then you'd be thinking uh, whether my pilcher is still there or not. Uh, sort of, you know, I, at least with squid, I don't have to think about that. Yeah. Okay. So you've got the confidence that you're still actively fishing. And means you leave your bait to soak yeah. longer, which means the fish are able to find it. Find it, yes. What, what about um, silver whiting on garfish? Uh, have you ever used them? Yes, I have uh, used uh, garfish and silver whiting. They 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 they, they, they do work. I think uh, the oily fish uh, f- seems to be better for snapper, but uh, again, the squid it would be would be my preferred uh, bait. Yeah, very good. So we've touched. Mostly on early season. So we've said we're going to be fishing up the northern end of Port Phillip. For those that are listening at home and they want to do some snapper fishing land base this year, what, as the water warms up and we come into snapper season proper, what would be your recommended areas to be looking at that, that time of year? One of the... Uh also, uh, what helps is if you've got a good uh, f- a circle of inner friends who are equally uh, passionate about catching, and uh, you know, uh, you, your friend could be Altona, I could be, I'm in uh, nearby in uh, Hampton. So he, whenever he gets uh, some time, he fishes in Altona. I'll fish in Hampton. So if I catch something, I'll say, hey, my, you know, there's a fish around. Come and fish with. Me. So that network of friend does help. And uh, I remember the, uh, when we were actively chasing snapper, we used to actually have a, a kind of a snapper fishing competition among uh, among ourselves. We used to just uh, put in fifty dollar each, and whoever catches the biggest wins. So and that also helps motivate <laughs> and go around. So, so what the point I'm trying to make is that you do have to move around. You know, there's uh, snapper could be there in uh, Williamstown, and in if you go after two weeks, uh, well, you know, uh, it might be a bit late. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So as the water warms, do you then move south in the bay? Yeah, absolutely south. Yes. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So areas like Mornington, Mount Martha. Yes. Uh, as it starts, uh, you know, maybe later in the season, uh, yeah, it, uh, you, you start, you know, going further in the deeper water. Yep. Yeah. But it starts becoming a bit difficult uh, in the sense that once the water temperature hits around 15 degrees and above, they are all in deep water uh, most of the time. And uh, I can you hear can your phone going off, Suraj. Are you getting snapper reports live? <laughs> is, the, is the network out <laughs> fishing the or what? The uh, yeah. Mate, my number one phone. podcast rule. Phone off. Yeah, I did. Priya. Uh, your beautiful <laughs> wife, Priya. <laughs> yes. She's That's all right. We'll forgive you. Right? Yeah. Um, all right. What about Western Port, Suraj? When the water warms up, do you try Western Port? Oh, no. I've never fished snapper. Uh, oh, you lie. Uh, and we're going to find your spot here on the map. Well, if you can help or if you can, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I'm happy to put some time. Uh, you know, uh, ah. Yeah. It's a, little bit, it's a little bit further for him to drive. You're being a bit no, 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 I, I You're I being cagey. No, no, I don't mind my. 
you know, like, okay, ah, it doesn't I'll go. Yeah. We'll travel yeah. for Snapper. Yeah, as long as you are uh, sort of, uh, you know, have time to come with me. <laughs> <laughs> You're being cagey. I know you fish Western Port. You don't have to tell everyone where, yeah. but you do fish Western Port during the season. Oh, okay. If you call that Western Port, okay, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I, I I didn't realize it was part of Western Port. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so I was, it was more in the ocean area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now you're giving your spot away, but that's all right. Yeah. So, what changes do you make to your tactics fishing in the current of Western Port? Then let's run through that quickly. What changes there for land base in Western Port? Yeah. Uh, I think Western Port is mostly current, so. Uh, uh, what I've seen is uh, for the land base, uh, you want to sort of uh, fish during the tide change, uh, and usually the low tide seems to be better. Uh, so running from high to low, and uh, after that, sort of when tide starts picking up, your your bait is uh, your your bait's not in productive water, and uh, because it because of the current. Yep. So yeah. So uh, during that uh, sort of tide change, uh, that's when it's uh, slack. So you, you're likely to have your bait in the zone. Okay. So you like tide changes. Yeah. And uh, what about coinciding with like a like time of day, a sunset or something like that? Uh, if you're fishing at night, normally I do uh, snapper fishing at night. I've seen that rising moon seems to produce better results like just yeah, okay. like three four days uh, before the full moon and again uh, not so much in the full moon and again after full moon you know a couple of days so either side of full moon seems to be seems to be quite pretty good yeah. all right so because you're being cagey i'm going to name a couple of land-based spots in western port that have produced in the past mm. so first ones that are quite obvious are some of the land-based Platforms like Cow's Jetty is a good one. Uh, New Haven, New Haven Jetty as well. Um, some of the rocky ledges in that New Haven region, very good as well. And we know places like Stockyard Point. Oh, yeah, and Jam- that's legendary. Yeah, up around that sort of region, uh, Tenby, if you can get access to the water through there, especially this time of year, well, you're although, a very good chance. I'm just uh, For what it's worth, when fishing Stockyard Point, that seems to be... Um, it's a it's up in the mud um, upper reaches of Western Port, and generally, um, yeah, when that when when the tide's low, um, you can walk all the way out and um, and cast into that little skinny channel that's in front there. Sorry, yep. so no, it was right. Suraj was saying to that the low tide seems to be better in Western Port. Well, yep. that's a prime example of with the tide going out, it allows you to cast into those deep channels. Well, I suppose the way Western Port is being a big tidal bowl on a high tide you are going to be casting into like a flat basically that's going to be maybe one to three meters deep yep whereas on a low tide if you can get out to these channels without sinking to your death in the yeah quick yeah there's sand, quicksand you got to be careful um, <laughs> then then on a low tide you're going to have access to these channels where the fish are they're more congregating in bigger numbers yeah and so that makes perfect sense yeah, the low tide change is probably one of the best times when you're fishing in Westport. Yeah, yeah and also the bait fish are getting pushed to the channel area. Yeah, okay, like they're yep. not spread out. Sure. On, on the, on the, you know, in the high tide they're coming up, so uh, so in the low tide they get they they get concentrated. Uh, it's like a big funnel. Yeah, so that's what the, the big daddies are likely to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you're in, you're intercepting fish a lot like what we do in the boat, really. Yeah. intercepting as they move yeah. along in, on the current. Plenty of big daddy gummies as well. Would well, be the- well, they also like, uh, Snapper also likes to in- intercept, isn't it? Yeah. I, I know uh, in an uh, uh, area in uh, Altona, so it's something like that. Uh, in the low tide, sort of, you know, you hit uh, and you do produce a, a good size Snapper from there. Yeah, okay. Very interesting. Well... What else have we got to cover? You, this is your seminar, Suraj. Is there any other points that you uh, you desperately wanted to get out in order to help people that are listening to catch beautiful snapper off the rocks this season? Is there anything we haven't covered? I mean, uh, what I'll say is, uh, whoever is going to aspire for to catch snapper, it's a it's more of a journey. It's not, it's not a you know a race or something like that. That uh, you know, I have to catch a big snapper by September twentieth or something like that. Give yourself time, but 
uh, do uh, move around, uh, uh, have that uh, men, uh, you know positive uh, you know big you know, that mental attitude. Don't uh, uh, you use uh, uh, appropriate size uh, uh, hooks uh, and use sharp hooks. Uh, sometimes what happens is you, you uh, make sure you, the plastic's you, taken off the hook. <laughs> yeah, and the <laughs> hooks are good, and and your your braid pr- presentation is good, and uh, you are confident when you cast, and don't have the mentality that I, I, I you know you're just going there to catch fish. Uh, I have seen a lot of people even use. Uh, uh, what is steel trays? So <laughs> they are hoping, uh, or, or if they are going to get barracuda or something like that, they're going to catch that one too. Well, I, um, <laughs> I, I have. Dave, I've seen <laughs> they're going to they're going for snapper, but they've got a wire trace out there. <laughs> what, what about our what about our good mate Race, Race Kennedy? I wonder if he might be listening tonight. I've I've fished with you and him off the rocks, and you were quite horrified at some of the uh, techniques that Race was employing. Uh, he was, you know, using baits that were completely chewed up and barely left on the hook. He was cast casting sinkers off, tangling lines. What do you What do you have to say to Race if you might be listening, Suraj? Let's give him a shout out. Well, uh, with Reese, uh, he's a good fellow. Uh, just give him some food and uh, <laughs> you know, and cheap uh, a cheap uh, rod and line. Uh, don't give the expensive one. Okay, uh, yep, yep. So you've got a race uh, rod, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, he'll be happy with that. Yeah. And uh, uh, he's I mean, there for the uh, company and the, yeah, and the food, it, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's there for the company, drinks and dance. Uh, and uh, if you, know, you catch <laughs> if you catch a fish, uh, well. It's a bonus. Do you know what it reminds me of, Suraj? When yeah. I was about three year, years old and my dad would take me out on the boat, he'd give me a, a fishing rod with no line attached to it that I could just wave around. think I was fishing and involved, but the, the thing was I couldn't get tangled and get in the way, but I was happy. <laughs> so I'd sort of liken it a little bit to that. Oh, right. <laughs> That's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, probably this is similar to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, he's a good man. He, he's a, definitely a good man, a good fellow. I've got a question for you, Suraj. Yeah. Do you do you ever use uh, look? Uh, drones are becoming popular with fishing, and do you find um, are you using drones? Ever tried to use drones for your snapper land based fishing before? Uh, I uh, we have started exploring with uh, with the drone. Uh, we went to fish twice. Uh, it seems to be like uh, any other, you know, when you when you buy a new boat, you you got to learn how to do the trailer, how to boat. So something similar. So it, the drone seems to have its, uh, you know, uh, the, the rig you made is you make for the drone is different. Uh, uh, so we are learning. We just started uh, exploring the drone. Uh, we've only fished twice, but we are keen to sort of uh, take you guys around and. No, go somewhere. Uh, it, it does uh, open up a l- what I noticed when when we were sort of fishing. It, it just opens up a lot of uh, opportunity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we were, we fished from. Uh, we we went to uh, Black Rock and just uh, sort of we were trying and you know we were just close to the boat. You know when we dropped, when we dropped the bait. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very exciting prospect. Yeah, the whole yeah. drone thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to see where that that takes us. Yeah, and I sort of like to explore that uh, that side of things too. Mm. What I notice is a bit different, you know, when, when you've got 215 meter line out there, you know, sort of, uh, and you, you're catching, uh, we caught a s- small uh, pinky, and uh, just imagine uh, 200, you have to reel it now, 250 <laughs> meters. Just imagine if you've now got a stingray out there in that line. Oof. Could so, get <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. Uh, I was thinking. Do you want to borrow one of my fifty wads? <laughs> yeah. Tiagras. Well, yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, maybe, maybe we did something like a Tiagra or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, that's exciting. The, yeah. the future of snapper fishing is on its way. I mean, yeah. So yeah, we are, we are enjoying the drone fishing and uh, and also, like I said, you know, this uh, from this onwards, uh, this year onwards, uh, uh, hopefully I I can show you guys uh, ninety plus, uh, hopefully ninety five plus snapper land base. Very exciting. Well, thank you for sharing the secrets of a pro, Suraj, 
uh, as very just sp- very spiritual. He is. He's like he's like a is a is like a fishing guiding. Yeah, is it so calm and spiritual? I like it. It's a mindset thing. That's what I got out of that. It's an Joel. attitude. An attitude. Yeah. And this video I'm about to play you expresses the attitude. People may recognize this video. I have to give it a play, and you got to watch this because this is the origins of the King Kong Donkey Kong. Dev, Captain Dev, <laughs> King Kong Donkey Kong, mate. Look at yeah. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> King Kong, our Captain Dev is the best. <laughs> All right, Captain Mike. So beautiful message that I received from yourself, Siraj, there. And Joey, did you see the giant whiting in that video? Yeah. And the salmon? Yeah. Oh, he was, so he got a bit distracted by the salmons there for a yeah, little there bit. Yeah, there seems to have been some yeah, distraction no, no, happening. There's, there's one, one uh, you know, uh, guy in the team uh, who who sort of kind of insists on casting one uh, rod uh, for for whiting or any small kind of fish. So and uh, yeah, that's that's his catch. Nice, thing, nice yeah. Arapus tratter there. <laughs> yes, the salmon <laughs> and uh, and Pagras. Um, Syphilis. <laughs> Chrysalis. Whatever the new stuff. Oh, yeah, the Chrysalis. Chrysophis. 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 Isn't that like Alien? Alien 3? There's the Chrysalis. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, we've rambled enough. But, yeah, thanks, Suraj, for coming on. Uh, I, can, I, just, I just want to end this one quickly, Joey. Boat show coming up. We're keen as been for that one. Oh, yeah. We're about to drop some new merch. So here's the new design here on your screen, a sneak peek for everyone. The big three of Melbourne. Snapper. Tuna, kingfish. What oh, more yeah. could you want, Joey? Melbourne big three. Maybe next yeah. one we'll do a whiting, salmon, and <laughs> and uh, flounder. <laughs> flounder. Oh, that, flathead. That's Flatty, flathead. <laughs> flathead. Blue blue yeah. spot flathead. But anyway, we're getting a bunch of these prints, and so if you want to get your hands on them, keep an eye out, and we'll be uh, doing a drop there, and just um, shoot us a message if you if you want to get on the on the list for that, and. We'll uh, get them out to you guys. We're going to have some at the boat show, obviously. So, looking forward to that. All right, boys. Snapper fishing 101 from the land. So we covered some good stuff there. Suraj. Yeah, yeah. Thanks I, for coming on. I mean, I, I hope you guys are happy with uh, uh, what I've said. Is there any questions you have? Let's say if you were to uh, uh, do start doing land base, is there anything you sort of you wish to ask? How many bottle or red? Bottles of red per session would be required. What's optim- optimal? Look, you're going to be putting almost 10, 12 hours, so one bottle should be okay. One? That's you, responsible. You liar. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> you liar. No, you did a good job, Suraj. You Thank covered you. covered a lot. So, yeah, hopefully yeah. all of our listeners enjoyed that as well. And, um, yeah, we hope to see yeah. some of our listeners send through their reports of uh, some big daddies. Yeah, and also what I want to say, if you've got any questions or something, just put it in the comment section or something, you know. And, uh, or have uh, a look at our new website. Yeah. And then uh, we can answer them. Yes. Because a lot of, uh, I, I do want uh, you guys who was there trying to chase Snapper, you know, uh, uh, success in your journey. Maybe yeah. on the new website that you're building for us, Suraj, we can have a land based Snapper secret section that you can update for us. Sure, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joey, hit that Let's button. Let's do it. <laughs> King Kong, Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong, mate. Look at him. <laughs> A live one for you. Good night, everyone. <laughs>